My name is Amanda McCaver, and I am an artist who works with embroidery and large-scale installations, and uh, my practice is based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, my work has involved embroidery and drawing, and I came to embroidery through uh, the lens of drawing. I was taking a class in university where we were talking about drawing and uh, what that could mean. Um, the class was full of all sorts of different kinds of makers and artists. We had dancers, we had painters. Um, and as a class, we started to think about what drawing could be um, and what our definition of drawing could be. So we all decided that it could be, it would be a line. Anything that uh, involved line would be something that we would explore in the class. So it was one of those classes that sort of changed my perspective of the world and everything became a drawing to me. And I started to think about how thread was such an interesting type of line because it's so slight that it, uh, it almost feels two dimensional, but it actually has a sculptural quality to it. I also really loved the connections to, you know, clothing and touch um, and history. Um, and so all of those things sort of excited me about the material. Um, and I started to think about what I wanted to do with thread. So I created almost like this art problem for myself where I thought, um, wouldn't it be interesting to create a drawing out of thread that didn't have a base? So I did a couple of different things. Um, sewing was something that, that sort of was in my wheelhouse. Um, I had learned how to sew with my grandmother when I was younger. Um, so I stitched into paper and sort of tore the paper away. I thought I needed something that would be there for me to stitch into and that I could then take away. Um, so I stitched into paper, I stitched into wax. Um, all of those things are like a little too messy. Um, but what I discovered and what um, any sort of textile person would tell you is that there's a fabric uh, called water soluble stabilizer. And basically it's a fabric that when water touches it, it dissolves. Um, and this might sound, not sound <laughs> that interesting, but um, to me, it was like magic. So what this material allows me to do is sort of um, take an image and draw with a pen onto the surface of the fabric. So I have something to sort of follow as I'm sewing. And then I take my sewing machine and I start to build up those, those lines. So um, you'll see in the room installations in the exhibition, I usually work from light to dark threads, sort of thinking a lot about you know, cross hatching and how to build up value and depth in the work. So I usually lay out some white threads and then I start to stitch at different sort of angles to start to shade. And I work from, you know, light blue threads to darker blue threads and then the outline. And what happens is as I'm drawing with my sewing machine, um, I'm creating connection points and it's actually those connection points that create strength in the work. So that's how the, the pieces start to hold together. And it's actually really incredible how strong these pieces are. Like you can't tear them apart, even though they seem really sort of lace-like. Um, so after I've created all those connection points where I'm you know, making an image, but also making a structure, um, I can then dissolve the base. And that happens just by putting the, the fabric or the, the thread work into water, soaking it, and then laying it flat to dry. So you'll see in the pieces that there's lots of open spaces. There's um, some, yeah, play between positive and negative space in the work. And you'll also see in the exhibition that the pieces are the same on the front and the back. So you'll be able to like sort of peek around some of the work and see that. Um, and that's another really interesting thing. So while the pieces in the work are quite flat, you'll be able to see sort of that sculptural quality of like the front and the back of the work because some of the pieces are, you know, pulled away from the wall. So you can see that, that characteristic of the work. Um, so in the exhibition, there are a number of large scale pieces that um, I've been working on for a number of years. The first one I'd like to talk about is floating garden. Uh, this piece is made out of, a, of hundreds of individual flower stems. Um, and they all hang individually from the ceiling. So it creates sort of this expanse of flowers. It's an imagined um, space. It's something that's sort of like a fantasy to me. Um, I love the view from underneath. Um, and I like the idea of creating sort of dreamlike, almost utopian spaces uh, for people to experience. 
when I was making this work, I was thinking a lot about um, children's books. I was looking at um, Beatrix Potter um, and her um, drawings for, you know, uh, Peter Rabbit and all those fun things. She also has a really great series of uh, botanical uh, drawings that you can see on the Victoria and Albert Museum website. Um, and I just loved the color scheme. I loved the way that she was using line in that work. And it really became sort of like a, um, a touchstone for me for that piece. I was also thinking a lot about pressed flowers and how, you know, that's sort of something that I do in my practice is take something that's three dimensional and flatten it. Um, and I was thinking about that impulse. And then I was also really thinking about the impulse of um, bringing uh, florals into interiors and what it would mean to create sort of like a, an interior garden. Um, and as you can see, I'm really interested in botanicals um, in my interior spaces as well. Um, yeah, so that piece is really exciting. I love that the pieces sort of spin and move as more people come into the room. Um, so it almost animates itself as it uh, as it uh, moves in the space. The other series of pieces are a series of interiors. The first one is Stand In For Home and it was the first large installation that I made. It's, uh, it's got a sort of a floral wallpaper, three chairs, a table, a window, um, sort of like a vignette of an interior space. And this was based on my kitchen space in one of my previous rental apartments in Toronto. Um, where I was living with roommates and sort of creating a home for the first time, which was a really special thing to me and something that um, I wanted to sort of keep and, and memorialize. So when I was thinking about this piece, um, I was thinking about scale. All of the chairs, tables, wallpaper are made on a one-to-one -one scale. So it's almost like a life-size diorama that I created out of thread. Um, all of the pieces are made on sort of se separately, so they hang on different planes to create the impression of depth. Um, and they all pack down really small, so it's almost like this memory or this this portable home that I can take with me as I'm, you know, moving from spot to spot. Um, so when I made that piece in 2010, I was thinking about it that way, but I'm also thinking now about how um, the pandemic and being at home so much might change the meaning of these pieces or the way that people people read them. So that's quite exciting to me. Something you'll notice when you go see the work is that the work is sort of floating. Um, and I really like this way that textile sort of reacts to the air and the movement in the room. It almost has like a ghost-like quality. And sometimes I think about how memories are sort of present, but not present, you know, there, but not there. Um, and you'll see the next piece, living room, uh, which sort of has portraits of, of dogs, which are actual paintings I have, um, and then a couch and some chairs. And you'll see in this piece, it's a little bit different from Stand In For Home because there's more of those personal details, maybe some of the mess of life that never gets put away. Um, those sort of things are in, in that piece. So you'll be able to see um, some of that like more personal uh, those personal touches in, in that piece. I also wanted to talk about um, these sort of hints at moving. Um, so there's a pile of suitcases and a backpack, which um, are things that I own. <laughs> um, you can see some of that pile of suitcases here. I think that that's sort of symbolism of, you know, this piece will get packed up and moved or, you know, this piece is sort of about moving or being in space just for a time. Um, and then the last piece is called Sample Wall, and it's a collection of my samples. It's really a record of my practice in my studio, um, where I'm often testing things out. I love testing out color. I'm really interested in, you know, all sorts of things. And when I put this work together, it really was a collection of, of um, pieces that I've just been working on, you know, before I start a work, I'll test things out and keep those samples as a record so that I can, you know, refer to them later. Um, and I often think of my work as these very separate projects, but for sample wall, it's sort of everything all together. The pieces are arranged on the wall, almost looking like wallpaper, and they're all individually pinned. So sometimes I also think of it as like a, a Where's Waldo, where you can like you know, find these little details, play I spy. Um, but it is something that 
is quite exciting for me to see because there's a range of work, but there's also something that really unites all the pieces together. Thanks everybody for um, taking the time to watch this video. Thanks to the Delphine Art Center for hosting this work and uh, all the effort that it's taken to put this uh, this exhibition up. It's a labor of love for sure. It's not a easy thing to put up. So thank you. And I also hope that everybody gets to see gets to see some artwork in person.